toughest kid in the neighborhood was, right? I want to know the toughest man on the planet is. That's what we're gonna find out. Hey everyone, I'm doing something a little different today. I'm just doing an unscripted B-log or vlog or however you say that. And I'm actually going to talk about a good movie for once. And I don't do these very often. In fact, it's this may be the first one I've done on this channel because, for one thing, I don't work well without a script. So you'll probably hear me say, uh, um, um, uh, 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 um, a lot. So just to warn you. Um, uh, see, I just did it. <laughs> and uh, also, I normally talk about bad movies on this channel, in case you haven't noticed. But I need to talk about this movie because it's a movie that I think everyone should see. Uh, this weekend, I had a chance to see a sneak preview of Warrior. And finally, at long last, we have a mixed martial arts movie that doesn't suck. And it's about goddamn time, because we've had a... I, mean, I reviewed Never Back Down, which they actually made a sequel to, and that comes out next week. And I am still in complete disbelief that that movie even exists. In fact, I won't believe it until I actually have the DVD in my hand and I sit down and watch it. And yes, it's going direct to DVD. They ain't wasting time on theaters for that, but I still, even direct to DVD, I can't believe that movie exists. But anyway, tangent, Whoosh. focus, focus. Warrior, talking about Warrior. This is the best movie I have seen all year. Um, just to put that into context, uh, the two movies that seem to be on everyone's list right now as their number one seem to be Super 8 and Cowboys and Aliens. Super 8, I'm almost ashamed to admit this, but I haven't seen it yet. It's on my to-do list, along with a thousand other movies. And Cowboys and Aliens, I have seen, and I didn't hate it or anything, but I do think that movie's very overrated. Um, I honestly don't understand why it's on so many people's number one. It, it wasn't bad, it's just I didn't think it was that good. But, yeah, Warrior, in any case, definitely trumps Cowboys and Aliens, and... It's just a very, very good movie. And even if you're not a fight fan, I do recommend seeing this movie because the story it tells is very good. And speaking of the story, uh, the premise behind this is a former hedge fund guy who wants to get in the fight game decides to uh, create a 16-man middleweight tournament to attempt to crown the greatest fighter on the planet. And he puts up a $5 million prize for the winner. So they organized a tournament in Atlantic City, uh, as far as I can tell, fighting under the typical unified rules with uh, the tournament taking place over two nights, two rounds per night. And the first, two, first three rounds of the tournament, I should say, are all three five-minute rounds. And the finals is, just like a championship fight, five rounds. I do have a bit of a problem with this because I really don't see New Jersey signing off on something like this. If anyone remembers the very short-lived organization called Yama, which if you don't remember it, I'm not surprised. But it was started by one of the former owners of UFC who wanted to recreate their former glory of the one-night eight-man tournaments. And the only way New Jersey would sign off on that is if the first two rounds of the tournament were one round per fight instead of the typical three rounds. And for many reasons, not just that one, but that was one reason why the tournament was very boring, because the first two rounds, very little happened. Um, I believe boxing has tried this before with similar results. You know, these one-round tournament, the, excuse me, these one-night tournaments just don't work anymore. They don't. And, of course, this is spread out over two nights, but still, I don't see New Jersey signing off on something like this. But, you know, it's a movie. They're allowed to bend the rules a little bit for dramatic purposes. That's how they work. It's a minor nitpick, I'm just saying, and I have a few more nitpicks with the fighting, but I will get to that in a minute. Um, anyway, the story, uh, basically we have a father played by Nick Nolte and his two grown sons, Brendan and Tommy, played respectively by Joel Edgerton and uh, Tom Hardy. They are um, all estranged, a very dysfunctional family. Father's a, a recovering alcoholic and the brothers have all left him behind a long time ago and also are at odds with each other. And everyone is very content just to ignore and be ignored by the rest of the family. Until this tournament comes along and fate kind of leads them all back together. And uh, Brendan's reasons for entering the tournament, they make them clear right away. 
Uh, he's a former UFC fighter, actually, who is now making a living as a high school physics teacher. He got out of the fight game because he was okay at it, but basically they, they say he was more or less a mid-carder. And now he has to get back into the fight game because he's up to his neck in debts and needs to make some money fast. And eventually he makes his way into this tournament and tries to take home that multi-million dollar prize. And they tell Tommy's story very differently. Um, basically, he shows up on his father's doorstep one day, just out of the blue. And really all we know is that he's a Marine that just came home from... Um, honestly, I forget if it was Iraq or Afghanistan, but it was one of the two. And uh, that's really all we know. He just kind of came back into his father's life just out of the blue and uh, basically decides that he wants to get into the fight game as well because he has his own reasons for wanting to make the money. I'm not going to give anything away because they, they reveal it very slowly over the course of the movie. The way they tell the story is very good. Uh, just giving you little hints and little bits and pieces. And about halfway through, if you're paying attention, you can kind of figure out what they're getting to. Uh, but they they do tell it very well without giving too much away too soon. Which is, I think, actually makes Tommy the more interesting character of the two. Because, Brendan, you know his entire story right off the bat. Not that his story isn't interesting, it is. But I definitely think Tommy was more of the focus of this movie than Brendan. But anyway, um, all three of them put in a really, really good performance here. In fact, Nick Nolte especially, I will be amazed if he does not get an Oscar nomination because he was outstanding in this movie. Did a very good job. Um, and there's... Um, being an MMA movie, of course, there are cameos from several of the fighters. Excuse me, I'm deliberately cheating here and looking up my notes. But, uh, yeah, there are cameos from Stefan Bonner and Rashad Evans playing themselves... Uh, basically doing commentary on MMA Live, along with the rest of the ESPN crew. And there are also some real fighters who have cameos in the tournament. Um, Anthony Johnson, Nate, uh, excuse me, Nate Marquardt, and Juan Carnero all play fighters, not using their real names for some reason. And I saw on IMDb that Eve Edwards is also in the movie. I don't remember seeing him, um, but he's apparently in there somewhere. And uh, also, Kurt Angle is one of the fighters in the tournament, in a non-speaking role because he's playing a Russian fighter who's supposedly the greatest middleweight in the world. And he's simply known as Koba. And I'm sure you can guess, yeah, he's basically playing Fedor. <laughs> he's, if, you're, if you're an MMA fan, you know what I'm talking about. He's playing Fedor. They don't even try to hide it. He's fucking Fedor. Um, in fact, they're, with the two main characters as well, Tommy and Brendan, there are kind of parallels to other real MMA fighters. Uh, Brendan kind of reminds me of Rich Franklin, except backwards, because Rich Franklin used to be a high school science teacher, I believe, and then got into the fight game. Brendan's kind of doing it backwards. He's a former fighter that became a physics teacher. And Tommy, when you actually see him fighting in the tournament, he fights a lot like BJ Penn used to uh, back in the early days before they were seriously regulated by the athletic commissions where basically he would go out there, just knock the guy out, and immediately run out of the cage. Wouldn't wait for his hand to get raised, wouldn't let them announce his name. He's just, nope, my job is done here, gone. And uh, Tommy does the same thing. Uh, nowadays, I don't think they would let him do that because, you know, the athletic commissions take this a lot more seriously. But it, it was kind of cool to see that little nod to BJ. And uh, I'm enjoying a tasty beverage while I do this review because I can. Um, yeah, the movie was, uh, very well directed. The fights were especially well shot, and that seems to be a lost art nowadays. It seems like no one, at least on this side of the Pacific, knows how to shoot a fight anymore. It's all shaky cam, fast cuts, and just, you can't tell who is fighting who. You can't tell who's beating the shit out of who. You just have no idea what's going on. Um, Michael Bay is especially guilty of this, but <laughs> just to name one person. Uh, but this movie... It is very fast, there is a little bit of shaky cam, but you can still tell what is going on. This is how fight scenes are supposed to be shot. As long, I don't care if it's a little shaky, if it's fast cuts, as it's, these are MMA fights, they're supposed to be fast paced. As long as I can tell who's punching who, who's trying to submit who, I'm happy. 
and this movie does that, and it does it fabulously. And it's about goddamn time someone figured this out. And uh, the fight choreography overall is very good. I did notice that nobody in this tournament seems to know anything about takedown defense or how to pull guard. The fights are all very offensive-based, and there's not a lot of defense, which I understand that makes it more exciting for the viewer. Not terribly realistic, though, to have a tournament composed supposedly of the 16 best mixed martial artists in the world, at least in the middleweight class, and not one of them knows how to play defense. <laughs> you think at least one guy would know how to pull guard, but, you know, but although part of that is the fights are basically highlights, because if you showed every single minute of every round, the movie would be eight hours long. And obviously you can't have that. So I, I understand why they did it. It's, it's just more nitpicking for me, just pointing out the parts that aren't realistic. I know why they did it. They have to embellish a few things to make it look more appealing to the viewer, to add dramatic effect and all that. I get it. Um, Rocky did the same thing, you know, and that's, and that's fucking Rocky. Rocky was amazing. And if you don't know that, why the hell have you not seen Rocky? In, in fact, stop watching this. Go watch Rocky right now. Come back when you're done. But anyway, uh, what else do I need to talk about? Um, I think I covered all the good stuff. Um, oh, one more thing here. In the finals of the tournament, um, at the very end, in the finals, the brothers end up fighting each other. A uh, hell of a family reunion for them. <laughs> Being, you know, estranged and not seeing each other for years, and then all of a sudden this tournament comes together, and they're like, oh, hi, you're still alive? Huh. Yeah, it was awkward. Then and handled very well by both actors. But in the, ver in the finals of the tournament, I won't say which fighter this happened to, but one of the brothers ends up hurting his arm and basically has to fight the entire tournament with one arm just hanging down to his side and, you know, fighting one-handed. And there is no fucking way this would fly. This was probably the most egregious mistake on the part of the filmmakers. There is no way... The referee, who is actually played by a real referee, it's Josh Rosenthal, playing himself... Um, if you've watched UFC, I'm sure you've seen him once or twice. There's no way that they would ever let that fly, especially in a commission state. But even in a non-commission state, I think if the referee sees that the guy's arm is hanging down and he can't move it and he's fighting one-handed, like it might occur to him, be like, you know what? Hang on, time out, Doc. Come in here, look at his arm. It's a, uh, it's not moving. You know, and this never occurs to the referee to check his arm. And even the other guy's trainer. But the other guy, fighter tries to call the referee over to tell him that he felt the guy's arm pop, and the trainer's like, no, 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 don't, don't bother with that. But, but if he tells him that, then your fighter wins. Why would you tell him not to do that? It's like, you're an idiot. But yeah, that, that was stupid. And <coughs> mm. Excuse me. Ah. Throat went dry for a second there. But yeah, I, I understand why they did it. It's just... They probably should have thought twice about that, but overall, a decent portrayal of the sport, those minor flaws aside, um, much better than I expected, honestly, and the story, fantastic, the direction, fantastic, it's very well shot, uh, the fight scenes especially are well done, and this, th this is going to get some Oscar nominations when Oscar season comes around. It's, like I said, I will be very surprised if Nick Nolte does not get something. I mean, even, even if he doesn't win, he, he's got to get a nomination for this. Unless there are, are just five other guys out there that are that much better, which I don't see happening, he's, he's going to get something. So that's, uh, that's about all I got to say. Warrior was awesome. It comes out on Friday. Go see it. Take care.